All right. Hello once again. Jeff Scott of Rankin Technical College. And as part of the Rankin Technical College application and website development, AWD 1100 Programming Fundamentals with C Sharp class, I have been creating a series of video presentations based on the PowerPoint slides for our textbook, that being, as you can see on the screen, Mirox C Sharp 7th edition. I've done all of the ones for the first section and all of the ones for the second section with the exception of chapter 10, which I'm going to run over right now. Okay, all right. As always, our cover page here has what the chapter is about, and then the next two pages or next two slides have our objectives. So. This chapter is entitled, More Skills for Working with Windows Forms and Controls. This is kind of a hodgepodge chapter. Some of the stuff we've talked about, for instance, they talk about tab order. We've been doing that since almost day one. Um, custom and standard dialog boxes, guess what? We've been doing that with our show message routine. So a lot of that isn't new. We will look at the combo box, list box, radio buttons, check box, and group box in here. Talk a little bit about refactoring and show how you can use the form closing event to stop a form from closing. And there's a few other miscellaneous topics that are discussed in here as well. All right, here they're showing a form with five more types of controls. Let's grab a picture of this. Hopefully that worked. And I'm going to grab this, grab the whole thing here, copy it to the clipboard. And I'm going to build that right in front of you right now. So our last thing we saved as Chapter 9 program. So let's call this Chapter 10 programs. programs not gram all right so I'm going to right mouse click I'm going to start up Visual Studio this will be of course another Windows form project we will call this five more controls because that's what it was the solution name will be chapter 10 program programs solution there's that make that a little wider bring this over and bring this over all right now I'm going to create what is shown right here all right, so let's get to it. I'm going to cut this way down and see if I can do, do it like that. There we go. All right, so first we want to change this. We'll call this FRM payment. And yes, we want to change all those. And we will change the text in here as well to payment again i'm just trying to make this pretty much look the way that it does in on here so this is called a group box we want a group box with two radio buttons in it so i'm going to make a group box right there let's change the background color of our form just because i think at least it makes it easier for me to work with hopefully for you to view as all as also make that green that's fine this will have two radio buttons in it so i will put in put them in there is my first radio button and i will do a control c and a control v and put in my second radio button all right so let's change the font on all of this as we've been doing this may look a little funky for a moment but I am going to make it 18, and I am going to make this bold. 
All right, I realize it's a little hard to see. Let me grab the group box, move that down, grab these radio buttons and move them down as well. All right, so our group box is going to hold in it. This will be our billing and then credit card and bill customer. So I'm going to change this to GB for group box, GB billing, and I'm going to make the text billing. Okay. And for our radio buttons, which are typically called RAD, and I'm not sure why, but it's short for radio, uh, we are going to put here credit card, and then the other one again is bill customer. So this will be RAD credit card. And this will say credit card. And this will be rad bill customer. And it will say bill customer. All right, it's looking okay. And what do we have next? We have a label here that says credit card type and then a list box. So let's add our label. Auto size it to false. This will be our credit card type. I think that's what it said as well. So credit card type. Once again, we will make play with our fonts. All right, so that'll be our credit card type. Then we want a list box. So this was, we already put that in. So this will be a list box here. Put it right there. Let's move that over should be about right there something like that so this will be lst credit card type now there's a, a few things about these just so you know first let me play with the font as i always do all right and that is you can fill these up in code or you can fill them up right from the design. And that's what I'm gonna do for now. So I'm gonna go down to items. It says collection. When I click on it, I get an ellipsis. Now I can add what I wanna put in there. And I wanna put in there Visa, MasterCard, and American Express. So Visa, MasterCard, and American, American Express. And, okay, there those are. Okay, I can move this down a little bit, etc. You can see how it's kind of coming and it's shaping up. So what else do we have here? We've got card number, and that's a text box. So I will change that to LBL card number. And it'll say card number. <clears throat> I'd like to make both those right justified. So I will change my text to line to middle right. There that is. And I'm going to put in a text box. So you can see not all of the controls that are in here are new so this was lbl card number which i yeah i spelled it right so this will be txt card number again i've said this before and it's not mandatory that you give those your labels and text boxes etc or labels and list boxes the same name to me 
just makes it much easier when I'm trying to see personally what goes with what. All right, that should work. Getting there. Next, we've got expiration date. So let's add that. This is going to have to go down a bit because this is going to have to be a little longer. So this should say, this should be my LBL expiration date. And the text will be expiration date. Okay. And next we had, not that. Next we had, select a month and select a year. And these are both drop down lists. And since they're drop downs, we just put them right next to one another. All right, so this can say <clears throat> month, and the other one can say year. So this will be CB for combo, CBO month, and this will be CBO year. Again, I can fill these up in code, but I'm going to try to make this as simple as possible. So I'm going to come in here, and in my collection, I'm going to put in all my months, January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, and December. Don't think I made any mistakes. Oh, and the first thing should say month. How about just select month? Okay, now this is going to have to be wider, I can tell, because this is, once I make this the same font size as everything else, it'll be too big. So this will be 18, and again, bold. Okay, <clears throat> I am going to take all of these and make them wider, make that better. So this was CBO month. This will be CBO year. I guess I already did name it. Let's go down and again, <clears throat> let's set the font size and the boldness. And then let's go to our items. We will put in last year, which was 2021, and then 2022, 2023. 2024, 2025, 2026, 2027. I want a 10 of them. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 2028, 2029, and 2030. Okay, click OK. Once again, I'm going to click on here and make sure I've changed. So I did set my font. And this first one, again, just like before, should say year. Select year. All right, click OK. All righty. Next, we have a checkbox and then set as default billing method. So a checkbox. And we want our text 
checkbox chk default i'm going to call it not maybe not the best wordage but it's what i'm using and this was i think well, let's change the size first And this was set as default billing method. Set as default billing method. Very good. So set as default billing method. There's all that. Finally, let's add our buttons. I think that's all that's left. Yep. They've got an OK and a cancel. I'll tell you what, we're going to make four here. And as always, I'm going to play with the font and the boldness. That'll be calculate, that'll be cancel, that'll be clear, and that'll be exit. All right, just about finished with this interface. In fact, control A, let's lock it into place. So this first one will be calculate, BTN calculate with the word calculate. The second one will be cancel, and it will be BTN cancel. The third one will be clear, and it'll be BTN clear. And finally, the last one will be exit, and it will be BTN exit. All right, as always, let's pretty this and do what we have to do here. And that is, let's right mouse click on here and go to accept button will be calculate. I don't know what the cancel button is going to do, but that'll be our cancel button. Just makes sense. All right, let's set our start position to center screen. Uh, what else do we have here? I am going to do my view tab order, and I'm going to set those as that zero, so that's okay. In fact, we'll make that zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and I should have set that one earlier, and I didn't. So let me do it, Nick, do it again. View tab order, view tab order, and that would be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. I think that's good. And view tab order. Okay. That'll be my calculate button. That'll be my cancel button. That'll be my clear button. I don't know what I'm going to want to do in here in clear, but we'll see. And finally, that'll be my exit button. For the exit button, as always, I will grab that code. So let me grab that code. <clears throat> i got to grab something out of here first that I might have just removed that I didn't mean to. Put it there. All right. And what am I doing here? So I'm going to grab that exit button code.
it's here. Copy. Come on up here. Come on. Exit. Exit. Exit program, which we'll write right here. Private void exit program. There's that code. Let me move these over. I don't need this to be so big anymore. All right, let's do a file save all. And let's run it and see what it looks like. All right, so we've got that. There's our drop down, select month with our months. There's our drop down with our years, select year. Notice I screwed that up, but I got to fix that. And our exit button should work. Good. All right, so let's just go back and fix that one thing, which is in here in our collections. So under items, rather. Hit enter there. Okay, file, save all. Let's run it one more time. Make sure that one looks okay. And it does. Whoa, 39. It does not. Twenty thirty. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, thirty. File, save all, boom. Okay, so what I've done then is I've built the interface here that they're using in the chapter. Okay, so let me jump back into our slides. So I've now built that interface. Okay, now common properties of list boxes. Let's, let's bring this up. Kind of glad I left that running, so... This is a list box right here. The selected index starts at zero. All right, it starts at zero and so that's zero, one, two. If there's nothing selected, it's negative one. That's the index. The item, so the item there is Visa for zero. MasterCard for one and American Express for two. All right. There's the actual text that's in there. You can automatically sort them in alphabetic order. I already showed you the items. We've got a, uh, the drop down style we don't have to worry about. All right. And the selection mode. Do you want to allow only one to be selected? Can multiple be selected, etc.? So that's for both list boxes. And combo boxes, which is what these are. Okay. The events select index changed. So if I go from here to here, a select index changed happened. I don't know what the text change is going to do. I've never really worked with that one in here. So I'm just trying to run through this as we're going through the chapter here. The items collection has a count. Okay. So if I want to know how many are in there, if I want to add an item, now I did those manually inside of, I did them manually inside of design mode. But if I wanted to put them into code, I could have added each one in there also. Maybe I'll show you that in a later chapter, but you use the add. All right, that adds them one after another. Insert can add them if you forget and forget to put one in between a couple more. Remove. You can use to remove them all, basically. Uh, I'm sorry, to remove the current one. Remove at. I should say remove. I, I think clear clears them all. I don't know if remove removes them all. I think with uh, this, is it says object, and here's the index. This is just removing one. Okay. So this is how they did it. Okay, and that's how they fill that up. Let's grab that code. I'm going to actually grab that and do it like that. So I'm going to grab this code right here. I'm going to go into the program we've been working on. Stop the run. If, if all this works, it should look exactly like it looks right now, which is fine. 
but I'm going to open up my form load event and I'm going to put that in. So that's the months array right there where it says select a month and it's got all the different months. All right. So we've got that. And then after that, we're going to put in this for each loop. This should automatically, I should even, yeah, it is automatically. This should, using code, fill up our combo box. Now, I didn't call it this. I called it CB O month. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave this right here and I'm going to do a file, save all. This is doing the same thing, but in code that we did here where we went into the items collection. So I'm going to go back into that items collection and I'm going to manually remove everything that was in there and run the program. All right. And you'll notice our month, et cetera, they're all still in there. But now it's been filled programmatically using code. Okay, I'm going to make this a little bit wider. Hopefully I made that wide enough. You know what? If I didn't, forget it. That's all I'm doing. So let's see. That works. Select a month. And our years. Good. Okay. And exit. But now we fill that up programmatically as opposed to the way that it was before. All right. So let's let's keep going here. Oops. There we go. All right. Here's the, as it says, the code that loads the combo box with the years. So let's do that. Again, this is now filling that up, but it is filling that up using code as opposed to when I did it. I filled it up and I manually put it in there myself. So there's that. So let's go back and I, where it's got C, I think, I, I think I just, what did I call mine? CB uh, year. Okay. I oh, didn't like that, so maybe it wasn't year. Let's go look. So this is CBO year. Save. Now I can go in here and again manually go in and where I filled in the year values right here, go to my items collection and remove that. save and run the program and it again should look exactly the same as it did previously okay except it's got the current year and it goes that many you know 22 like eight years that's fine all right We can also you come in here and load up our uh, list box. Okay, so let's do that. So that's this here. So let's go into our items collection and right away remove what's in there. You'll notice it'll now look empty other than the name. But when we go in into our form here, this is actually a much cleaner way of going in and doing it in code. Now, LST, did I actually call it credit card type? 
Wow. So let's see if that filled that up. And you'll see it's back again. Okay, and that's that one's automatically filled in. So Statements that get information from a combo or list box. All right. We're going to be going through some of that in just a bit. Code that works with a combo box of names. Well, here they're creating a new combo back box rather than they're putting three names in it. Julie Taylor, Ann Bame, and Kelly Slivkoff. And then they're adding them to the list box. So when they get done, it'll be a list box. So it'll look like this but it'll have the three names in it all right the group box i already showed you now radio buttons can have checked you can set one as being checked so that can be your default i'm not going to every time you this one's checked and you click this one or this one's clicked and you check this one a check changed event takes place all right you can manually set these things in code. You can check them in code, etc. Now, the tab order I'm not going to go over because I already ran it for you. I may not have used their tab order. I don't care. Okay? I'm not going to run over tab order because I've gone through that with you before. All right. If you want help with controls, it says here you can go out to this Microsoft documentation. Now, what if you don't want to do that? Now, I'm not going to do what I'm about to show you. But on your F, your function keys at the top of the keyboard, if you have, so let's say you come back to your code here and here, and you click on this radio button, and you hit your F1 function key, that is designed to give you help about the radio button. Now, I'm not going to show it to you, and the reason I'm not going to show it to you is because I am running Camtasia screen capture software right now. When I hit F1, it goofs up. It doesn't play well with this. All right, so I cannot do that. All right. Okay, the next thing that's in there is this, how to add a new form. I'm going to stop right now because it's time for me to go home. So I'm going to end this as part one, and I'll pick it up in part two in just a bit.